enjoying all coverage. We're continuing to bring you the best of the action. Congrats again to Grenada. They have three out of three wins, so top stuff from them. Now we're getting ready for the big, big match. Jamaica, they have Thank already so secured much, a win. Danny. And they'll be up again to the USA, USA, of course, hoping to get a spot at the World Cup next year. And what's for sure is the USA ladies are not uh, hoping to crumble at all. They're very, very confident. They've improved from their first match to their second match. And as you heard from their coach, Peter and Grayson Superville, they're, they're coming out with their hats out and they're hoping that they can dominate this match. Yeah, the Jamaicans definitely favourites for that one, Mariah. And especially after the impressive performance that they put down last night in their opening game against St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, they are fully expected to get the better of the United States. Let's remind you of what has gone on already at uh, this uh, on this second day of competition. Grenada taking on Antigua and Barbuda, and it was a comfortable victory for Grenada, coming away 62-29. And uh, yeah, they pretty much dominated this one, scored 15 goals in the first quarter, 20 in the second quarter, 13 in the third and 14 in the fourth quarter. Antigua and Barbuda had 5, 6, 9 and 9, but they just could not get anywhere close to this Grenada team led by Leticia Cato in at that goal shoot position. She was off for the third quarter, returned for the fourth, and uh, when she's on the court, uh, there is a, a comfort to which the Grenada team plays and yeah they definitely showed off all of that tonight uh, coming away with what is a third victory for them from as many matches remember that they got the better of St. Lucia 53-45 in their opener on Sunday before winning their second match on Sunday night 50-40 against the Cayman Islands and uh, today they go three from three with that victory over Antigua and Barbuda Antigua and Barbuda yet to register a win in this uh, tournament. So, let's look at confirmation of the results so far. Grenada 62-29 over Antigua and Barbuda. We were updating you on the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Trinidad and Tobago contest. Trinidad and Tobago coming out on top by seven goals. A close affair though, 42-49 to and a big win that for Trinidad and Tobago. St. Vincent and the Grenadines pushing them all the way. So, what do we have left tonight? USA versus Jamaica. That on our live coverage and Barbados will be in action as well over on court two. The updated table Trinidad and Tobago ahead of Grenada on goal difference. Barbados with two points from their one win on Sunday morning. They will be looking for another two points tonight. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, USA, St. Lucia, Cayman Islands and Antigua and Barbuda the bottom three yet to get off the mark. Remember Jamaica playing all these teams but the Jamaica matches will not impact the standings in any way. Jamaica has already qualified for the World Cup next year and uh, yeah, the world number three ranked team will be looking to try and win a first world title after their great Commonwealth Games performance where they finished a second. All right, Jamaica versus USA coming up and Mariah Ramarak has the coaches. Yeah, the of USA, Keaton Grayson, Superville, and Jamaica's head coach, Connie Francis. Keaton, we're getting ready to face the big bad Jamaica. We saw a taste of them yesterday. How are the chances looking? It's tough. It's going to be hard work from beginning to end, but we're up for the challenge, and we're hoping that, you know, we just, we just want to go out there and put out our best, give a good performance. Looking at the USA from the first and second matches, you have to be happy because there has been steady improvement among the ladies. How do you assess that? Um, that is correct, yeah. The build-up is continuing and, you know, as we have a group of girls who haven't really played together uh, 
in over a year, so it's really difficult to just bring them together at this international tournament and just get them gelling and, you know, doing the best that they can. But they're ready. Definitely. Connie, so yesterday we got a taste of your youngsters alongside Janelle Fowler. What did you make of these ladies? I thought they were, they were very good. Um, they were clinical at points, but they're still um, cause for concern in their development and their growth. I thought at times we were a bit frivolous with the ball, um, so we just need to, we have set some goals for them and we expect them to go out there and to execute those goals. You know, yesterday I spoke to Janelle and I asked her, how is it that, you know, even not the A team, you know, we're coming up against, I would say, describe it as a, the B team, the B Jamaica Sunshine Girls, and you all are incredible. What is it about Jamaica and, you know, the the manner in which you produce these youngsters? Yeah. I think that one of the things we have to give Anna Daly, um, the development coach, um, a, a lot of kudos for her work behind um, these youngsters. She has had them, they, some of them went to the under-23, and, and we have a vibrant college league and, and, and school league, so the, after the COVID, we were able to get some netball in, and we have a, a solid program um, with our national, in our national um, team. So we have our development squad, and we have uh, um, the seniors, the senior girls. So it's, and so we have, we actually go out there and ensure that we take care of these girls. And some of them are really handpicked, you know. Yeah, we do have um, a, a national trials where we uh, right now we're having the national trials all over the, the country to really to spot good talents. So the answer is the system that you have. Well, I want to thank both of you ladies. And of course, as always, wish you best of luck. May the best team win. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very you. much. I appreciate it. Thank All right. Let's head across now for a quick commercial break and continue to bring you the best of the America's Netball World Cup qualifiers.
a buzz around the National Indoor Sports Centre in Kingston, Jamaica, as we get ready for the host nation, Jamaica. They will be taking on the United States of America. Second match for Jamaica at this tournament. A third match for the United States of America. USA one win, one defeat on the opening day. Jamaica defeating St. Vincent and the Grenadines in their opening contest. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for Team USA. Camille Henry Ellis will be at goal shoot. Anaya Langine at goal attack. Shanice Daly at wing attack. Angela Namarembe at center. Tashana Daly at wing defense. Shayna Wilson at goal defense. And Ansel Langine at goalkeep. Ansel Langine, the mother of the goal attack. Anaya Langine. Here's the lineup for the Jamaica team. A few changes from the seven that started against St. Vincent and the Grenadines last night. Janille Fowler retains her position. No surprise at goal shoot. Kelsey Jonas, well, she replaces Pinkney at goal attack. Kwania Walker starts at wing attack. Sophia Hunter at center. Crystal Plummer didn't start last night. She gets a start tonight at wing defense. Kimon Shores at goal defense. And Misha Curry also gets a start tonight at the goalkeeper position. A few minutes away from the start of this one as the Americans get ready. Ricardo Chambers alongside Oberyn Peterson Natty, former Jamaica captain, coach and outstanding defender. And uh, we also have with us Kurt Dale, who is the captain of uh, the national men's team in uh, Jamaica. Uh, let me start with you, Oberyn. Jamaica versus the United States of America. We've already seen both teams in this tournament. What are you expecting tonight? Oh, I'm expecting a total dominant performance by the Jamaican team. I think there's no thinking. I know that the Jamaican team will come through for us. However, I mean, I expect the USA team to put up a fight, but I know the Jamaican team will be a lot too much for the United States of America team. But again, competition is what we're here to see. So I'm hoping to see both teams competing hard on court. Yeah, Dale, what are you expecting to see tonight from these two teams? I expect the Jamaicans to dominate as they did yesterday. They are the quality of the two teams, ranked number three in the world. So I expect them to put on a pretty good show. The USA, however, they'll want to improve on what they did yesterday in those two games. And they have gone with experience starting Camille Henry in at goal shooter. So um, let's see how they go. Yeah, for sure. Camille Henry Ellis uh, played a couple of quarters yesterday, I think. Um, Anaya Langine, we were quite impressed with the youngster when she came on at goal attack in that opening game. And uh, the United States of America will take a lot of confidence from their victory uh, last night over Antigua and Barbuda. But this is a completely different level against Jamaica tonight. Certainly for sure. You have the world best. <laughs> World best lining up at the goal shooter, Janelle Fowler. And you know, when you look at these young girls, the, the, the Pinkney, the, the um, Tafia, um, most of these players, I'm sure you, you'll see definitely one of them at the next World Championship in South Africa. So, and they have displayed that they can play this game and they're up for the challenge. Yeah, it's good to see the fans really coming out to support the Sunshine Girls, even though it is not their A team and so many of the first team members missing. But any opportunity to see the outstanding Janelle Fowler is an opportunity worth taking. And many of the fans, uh, of course, it's a national holiday here in Jamaica. It's Heroes Day and Janelle Fowler definitely a netball heroine in this land. Connie Francis has served Jamaica's netball for a long, long time. First as an outstanding player and now as coach Camille Henry Ellis played for Jamaica at the under-21 level. Now stepping out for the United States of America. The Langines in this lineup. Anaya Langine and her mother Ansel Langine. Shanice Daly, Namarembe. They've got all the heads in this lineup. 
but youngsters as well. This is what you consider to be a genuine mix of youth and experience. And they are about to get the experience of a lifetime against the Sunshine Girls. Dale, what would your approach be? What would you be saying if you were sitting on the bench as the coach of this United States team? Well, I'll, I'd be saying to them, just go out there, have some fun. Um, Jamaica is, number, is ranked number th three in the world. Um, it's a big hill to climb, but you know, the ball is round and you, that's why this is the reason why we play the game. So put on a good show, represent yourself well, and the experience will only help to develop this young team going forward. Yeah, the Jamaicans mightily impressive against St. Vincent and the Grenadines last night. Marshalled by Janil Fowler in those first two quarters. And then took a rest for the remainder of the match. And the youngsters were brilliant as well. The Jamaicans didn't miss a beat, scored 74 goals. And I think they could score even more tonight against the USA. Away they go. Langain, Namarembe, Namarembe inside to Langain, and the teenager sinks the first one, and the Americans off to a good start. So we talk about Anaya Langain last match, how feisty she is, and she's not afraid of anything. She's fearless. So. For her, I don't think she's worried about Jamaica ranking, but she's just going to go out there and play. The response, very quick from the Sunshine Girls. And the Jamaican team is they have started to put the pressure on. They're going at everything. That's what you want to do as a defensive unit. Put the pressure on, close down the spaces, make it difficult for the passes to come through. And then away the errors. And the Jamaicans so quick to get down the other end. And Janil Fowler goes two from two. Excellent transition by the Jamaican team just now. And once it gets anywhere near circle edge, um, it's going to go e going easy to Janil. Here they come again. Reed, oh, beautifully done. Kelsey Jonas has no problem putting the Jamaicans 3-1 up. Very exciting game just now, but I think the USA will need to slow it down if they intend to contain Jamaica, which I think is going to be a very, it's going to be a hard work for them, but they definitely have to slow things down and not want to push it down quick because yes. they're going to lose and then they're going to be out of play. Uh, yesterday we spoke about how easy it is to try and play at the pace of an outstanding team like the Jamaicans. But you have to be mindful that there are four quarters here and it takes a lot to play at this high intensity and to maintain a high level of work rate. But the Americans have started well. Hunter. Inside to Jonas. Jonas has options here, decides to shoot and converts. So far, it's way too easy on all phases by the Jamaican. The U.S. really need to step up, finding a body and adding some pressure on those passes because, as I said earlier, once it gets to circle edge, it's going to get going to Jamaica. The interception comes for the Jamaicans. Almost giving it away. Hunter at center. Walker at wing attack, Fowler at goal shoot. And Janelle Fowler saw her practicing her shooting from range yesterday. And she will take every opportunity she gets to shoot from wherever today as well. Yes. Shaw. Walker. Oh, lovely lob inside to Fowler. so difficult to defend against it is really difficult and especially when that ball is placed precisely and into the space it's very hard for them to get around forward 
Yeah, the Jamaicans on fire here. They are not allowing the Americans any time on the ball. Paul are not afraid to leave the circle. And Kelsey Jonas has it all for herself. And the Jamaicans convert a seventh goal in the first quarter. Beautiful display of skills from Kelsey Jones just now. She saved the ball on the sideline and then she went in and deservedly made the shot. And there she is again contesting the rebound. Yeah, Fauna trying to shoot from distance. This time she comes up short. But the Jamaicans get possession and Fauna will be closer to the goal this time. And oh, misses again, but gets the rebound. And this time she will convert for sure. And she does, 8-2 to two Jamaica. That's the luxury of being six foot five. You get your own, you're able to get your own rebound. Rebounds. Why a lot of attempts and get that rebound? Very much so. Ten minutes to go in the first quarter. Electric pace, at least when the Jamaicans have the ball. The United States of America just trying to stay close. Again, stolen inside the circle and the play being called back. I think the goal defense um, needed to be out of play before the ball is released and she stepped off so she's been penalized again. Nice attempt there by Mishka Crary. You saw her coming on in the second half yesterday. Really make a huge impact. And it's all about business today. Yeah, they finally get the steal, the Jamaicans. And now they have so many options as they head down court. Walker into Fowler. Fowler converts once again. And the Jamaicans on easy street. That's better defensive work from the USA. They forced the Jamaicans back, and there, there it is. They won the position, um, contact being called and general. Yeah, just putting a little bit more pressure on there. But can they actually take care of the ball when they have it? Look at how high Langain has to play to try and yes. get the ball. And when she does, needs all. Oh. Brilliant. Oh. <laughs> for two touch the lands for her. And Anaya Langain puts another one away, the third, fourth, the USA. Sometimes you just have to be happy for for one of those. So USA is playing a little off balance and it's going to cost them because what's going to happen when the ball is turned over, they are basically behind the play and Jamaica will make quick transition down the court. Controlled move down the court that last time from the Jamaicans. And they look a little winded right now. That's the USA team. So let's see how well they can keep up with the pace. I am winded with how quickly the Jamaicans are playing. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> Fowler nails another one and the Jamaicans lead 11 to 3 740 to go in the first quarter the goal defense from the USA is doing a lot of work on the center passes um, the Jamaica is setting up a nice wall on the on the first transverse line to deny the attackers the center pass but the goal defense she's always there supporting them but it's yeah. turned over again yeah the Jamaicans head forward with Walker again into Fowler. Such a successful move for the Jamaicans and they can attack either side of the court. Oh, ball given away. Won by Namarembe. Long ball in looking for Camille Henry Ellis. Rough day in the circle for the USA team. They just have to try to find a way to get that ball into the circle and at least get an attempt at goal. As a coach and you come into a match like this and you, you know that for the most part you're going to be overmatched by the quality you're up against. What do you say to your players? Is it that you set little targets? Let's get this number of goals or is it more about a conversation about execution? 
It's very much about execution, just playing it safe, playing it slow, not at the pace of a Jamaican team, because we go pretty fast. Jamaica plays very fast, so they have to slow it down and not play the same tempo. Yeah, the Jamaicans upping the tempo even now. And the Kelsey Jonas has options once again, but has no fear of shooting. All smiles on the Jamaica bench, 13 to 3. They're enjoying the game. <laughs> Langain. Still can't believe she didn't start that opening match yesterday. Yes, she would have made a huge difference. She is a quality player, there is no doubt about it. Still a teenager. Still learning the game. She recently started learning the game and, you know, she has really done well. She plays basketball, so she has that, you know, how basketball comes into netball. But so difficult to get the ball into that shooting area. The Jamaicans applying pressure on every USA pass. Langain with an opportunity. Lovely shooting technique she for Langain. Beautiful, beautiful. Reminds me of some of the great Australia and New Zealand shooters. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> the Jamaicans on fire. Jonas misses first time, gets the rebound. Misses second time. Paula helps her out this time. And Paula says, thank you very much. I'll add another one to my collection. And that's now two goal assists by Janiel in this quarter. You, see, you saw her pulling wide and then finding Kelsey under the post. Um, so that's, that's variations that she has added to her game over the years. Beautiful to see. Certainly, and we, we actually saw a lot of that yesterday, where she basically allows her goal attack to be involved more, rather than standing there being a target for that ball. So much of it is about experience for these youngsters as well, and she's ensuring that they maximize on these opportunities. You never know when they're going to be needed, even when all the first-choice players are available. 14 to 5, just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. USA in possession. Anaya Langain is working overtime, trying to create space to have the ball get to her. Yes, and Jamaica is, make, is contesting every pass. Henry to Langain. I must say, she's really testing the Jamaican defenders at the moment. Our athleticism is unreal. And I, I believe that if they look to her a little bit more and back themselves in making those passes, she could be a lot more, she could be a lot more dominant for them. For sure. She's getting into quality positions, but even when she is in good positions, the Jamaicans still, the Jamaicans still have the pass closed down. So it's difficult to make an accurate pass. The center pass, the attacking center pass for USA continue to be a, a struggle for them. <laughs> Janelle Paula releases the ball so quickly. It's as if she knows exactly what she's going to do with it before it comes. OBA, I, I feel for that keeper. She was in good front position. And I, I know she thought she was going to get that one. Yes. It's way over, way over, way over. Oh, re Janelle Fowler again. And the Jamaicans up to 16. The USA at six. They're enjoying this. I found over the years that Jamaicans really love their netball. And there is usually great support for the Sunshine Girls. And even when you look at the support tonight, even without so many of the first choice players, those who competed at the Commonwealth Games, for example, and still the support is really good inside the NISC tonight. As Jonah sinks another one for the Sunshine Girls. 140 to go in the first. Connie Walker. Very athletic player there at the wing attack. Intense, aggressive, everything, every adjective you could find for Kwanya. Qu 
she has decided not to utilize Janelle Fowler and several of those shots that's the first one she's missed though and you just saw some experience from the USA captain just now on that rebound she she got in front of Janelle and boxed out really well on that rebound Oh, Brilliant and done by Angela Namarembe. Unfortunately, she made a step in and turned it right back to the Jamaica team. Fowler puts in the 18th goal for Jamaica in this first quarter. Seconds to go. Sent past the USA. The Jamaicans will be looking to stop them from scoring to close out the quarter. Henry. Henry's almost playing as the goal attack now. A very pompous pass, but was held by um, Langain <laughs> and Naya. And that's and that's what I'm, I mean by using the strength of your team. Camille, the experience, she knows that. Um, the goal attack will be able to out jump them so she she came out allowed the goal attack to have the circle for herself and they love that pass in very smart play very smart play indeed and the americans score the last goal of the opening quarter but it belongs to jamaica the sunshine girls leading by 18 to 7 at the end of the first janelle fowler marshalling her young charges extremely well at the national indoor sports center in kingston jamaica Indoor Sports Center in Kingston, Jamaica. The Sunshine Girls leading the USA 18 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. Netball World Cup qualifiers for the Americas region. Let's have a look at those first half highlights. Janelle Fowler leading the Jamaican line, but it was a good start for the USA. They got the first goal of the match. And Ania Langain, who had a really good first quarter, the goal attack, shooting six from six, 100%. And uh, yeah, she gave the United States some hope but the overall quality of the Jamaicans just too much in that opening quarter why they are ranked number third in the world um, I mean it's not the first string team but it's really really good to see these youngsters out there and they're making good representation I mean um, you never know what may happen and they may need to come into the squad so this experience will only do a world of good for them yeah it certainly will and Janiel Fowler shooting well assisting well as well 13 from 15 in that first quarter Kelsey Jonas the goal attack for Jamaica 5 from 8 the USA actually shooting at 100% and you can't ask for much more than that as we look at the statistics from that first quarter and that th their performance is really a huge difference from yesterday when they started out against St. Vincent they could barely score and now they're like I mean they're, they're nowhere near the Jamaican team 
but they have a presence there on the board and, and they just need to take the time, get that ball inside to that goal, that goal attack and she's pretty much finishing out for them. Yeah, because I think Anaya Langain has made a massive difference. That's been the difference for me in the way the Americans have played. Remember, they lost that opening game convincingly to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and then got the better of Antigua and Barbuda last night. So one win and one defeat popper in the tournament. Of course, the result of this Jamaica match will not impact the standings, but such good experience um, that could potentially help them going forward in this tournament. Start of the second quarter then, and the Jamaicans already on the prowl. I'm surprised USA is sticking with the same same seven. I mean, um, they're down by a number, and they, I mean, the coach might be thinking she needs to get some game time under their belt. But the wing attack for me, she's she has only touched the ball once all quarter. So um, I was hoping they'd make a change here, but let's see how she goes this quarter. Yeah, Giselle Allison on for the Jamaicans. Pinkney on as well. Uh, goal attack and goal shoot. So. Abigail Sutherland on at center as well for the Jamaicans. So a number of changes made coming into this second quarter. And the Jamaicans sink another one. Didn't matter the combinations they tried last night against St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They were fluent, the Sunshine Girls, and we're seeing the same here at the start of the second. They were, Connie, Connie decided to go with the changes earlier today than she did yesterday, which is really good for the youngsters. Amanda, she was very impressive yesterday, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of her in the goal shooter today. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a bit of a miscommunication with their movement. I thought everyone was just tracking that ball rather than waiting on their time to get that ball. I just wonder if... Naya Langain can last this match. She is doing so much work out on court. And you know what? I think she will. She's very young. She's very um, aggressive. And she's going to go. She's going to go. She's consistently covering two-thirds of the court on every play. The Jamaican head forward. Beautiful role by Amanda. That's her signature movement, I might add. And yes. she finishes with the goal. Yes, she loves that that movement, loves that movement and does it really well. Always get away from the defender. Amanda Pinkney. Many feel that she could have a shot at going to the World Cup. We'll see. She gets an opportunity to showcase exactly what she's capable of here. And again, what was working for the U.S. in the quarter before when Camille drove out and then Anaya would go in and set up on the defenders. We're not seeing that at the start of this quarter. I was hoping that they would continue to use in that. But there's a win by the goalkeeper. Let's see what they do on this game. For sure. The United States heading down the other end. And they have slowed the Jamaicans momentarily. I think for the most part, when you look at the Jamaica setup, you would probably say 12 to 13 spots. Or, well, 12 the squad. So probably 9 to 10 spots secured for the World Cup and maybe 2 to 3 where you think a few outsiders might have an opportunity to slip in depending on how the coaching staff is feeling when the team is selected. Well, with what I'm seeing here, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of these players are on the team for the World Championship. Point I'm making. And this is their opportunity, and they're really putting their hand up. There's Amanda with a signature roll again. <laughs> they can't stay with her, Amanda Pinkney. They are loving it. They are absolutely loving it. And I don't think many of them would be surprised if she sneaks into the World Cup squad next year. But there's a long way to go before that. Unlucky, that was the play I was referring to early. Camille driving out and the goal attack going in. They almost got away with it, but it was a stepping call by the umpire. Yeah. 
Sutherland. Oh, she stepped. She stepped. Yeah, Gisela Allison. She didn't like that one. Uh, you know, th th this just tells me that you have to be mature about certain things. You, you played overseas. You play in the Vitality League. You know the calls are not going to come. You have to hold on to that ball. You can't get a hit and expect a call from the umpire and walk with the ball. You have to hold the ball. Yeah, Giselle Allison has uh, over at Peterson pointed out with wow. experience playing in England and uh, her 100% shooting record, Anaya Langain is now gone with that miss and the Jamaicans fly down the other end of the court. Pinkney gets closer and converts. So the Jamaicans not scoring at the same rate they did in the first quarter, but with Janelle Fowler not on the court, they have to work that much harder to get these shots away. But on the defensive end, they are not giving away much either. So very difficult for the USA to close. Nice defensive work from Teresa. She came in that goal defense at the start of the second quarter. And that's about her third deflection so far. So good work from the young goal defense. Another finish from Pinkney. Wasn't sure that she wanted to take that shot, but turned around confidently and she scored with confidence. A lot more confidence being shown by Connie Francis in the youngsters because recall that Janelle Fowler played the full first half in yesterday's match against St. Vincent of the Grenadines tonight, just one quarter before being taken off. And uh, Camille Henry Ellis has not had many opportunities to shoot tonight. Most of the shooting has been done by Langine, falling over herself and the ball as the Jamaicans are away again. Oh, long ball inside, too long. See, that's, that's not realizing that there's another fouler in the circle and you have to take that ball down. Not just catch it and throw it, get rid of it. But again, in these moments, we're, we're also seeing the youth, the inexperience in a lot of these Jamaican players. Because when you compare a lot of these turnovers to what we saw at the Commonwealth Games, a significantly more mature team at the Commonwealth Games, that's the type of error that the Jamaicans were not making. And that's the type of error that you would have seen Jamaica make, let's say, five, ten years ago that we didn't Hello. see in Birmingham this summer. Yes, and I definitely agree with you. A lot of them is based on inexperience, but this is a stage for them to get that experience and no doubt they'll build from this. So, wow. That was a telegraph pass. I, I was here thinking I could almost get that one. <laughs> You're not that good. <laughs> well, the has, fans are loving this. And Pigme has shown that she has the skill, the variation of skills, to get that ball somehow into that circle and score. Her movement is impeccable. Her ability to change directions is unlike many I have seen in this land she is really good definitely her timing her timing is very very good I mean she's very light on her feet and you have to be on her and paying attention to her what the GK could probably do is try to force her to one side and allow her to use one half of the circle instead of giving her um, the, back, the baseline to work and that will be her challenge against better teams and better quality defending. But for now, she looks like a class act. That's a really long ball. And that's a GC Foster connection. The wing defense, Crystal, going into her former GC Foster teammate, Giselle Allison. Beautiful pass and an even better take. And that was a good look. A good look by the wing defense there. 
all smiles inside the NISC tonight. Pinky goes down inside the circle. Addison is there and she converts. If anything, Pinkney going down made it easier for Allison. Allison picking up the crumbs on that one. <laughs> it's good crumbs too. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Jamaica leading 29-8, to 6.27 to go in the second quarter. We missed a change, Ricardo. Um, Camille Henry is now to the bench and Oshina Graham, she's, she's in at goal shooter. Beautifully intercepted there by the center of the USA team. Was a tough night for Camille, <laughs> barely got the ball. Yeah, she only shot one, made one attempt, and as a goal shooter, that's just not good enough. You have to be able to, you're the real target there. You have to be able to come up with at least a she, way to get that ball. She was wearing the bib, but Langine really has been the goal shooter. Yes. This combination of Oshina and, and Langine, they did a, they were better in the second half against St. Vincent. They scored 13 to the 9 scored by Camille and the other goal attack in the first half. So let's see if that can pay them any good. Oshina is a bit taller as well. Doesn't Beautiful. help here. No, nope, but again. Mishka Query with the intercept. Beautiful intercept by Mishka. Sutherland. For Pinkney. Giselle Allison arrives. Has to work herself into a better position, gets the contact, and now puts the shot away. Beautiful finish by Giselle. The Jamaicans hit the 30 mark, scored 74 last night. Can they better that tonight? They are on course, five minutes to go in the second quarter. Allison from distance. Oh, Allison sinks it. The long bomb queen, that's why she's yeah. been selected to play for Jamaica in the upcoming Fast Five series in November. Hopefully those shots go with her. <laughs> There's a different pressure at Fast Five. Hopefully she'll be able to handle it. This Anaya, she's not giving them any chance. You just wonder what she could do in a better team. Yes. With better service because right now she looks like a fantastic young player. Pinkney misses but gets the rebound and puts that away. And every young player out there should be watching that. Every young shooter, you take an you make an attempt and you follow for the rebound. That was excellent work by Amanda. The Americans get the turnover. Look at Langine. Look at where she collects the ball for the first time. She's doing the work. Her work rate is very high in this team. She's using the full length of the court that's available to her position. That was good hustle from the USA wing attack. She yes. chased that ball down with everything she got and, and they they're, they're still maintain and that's what basically the USA players need to do. Jamaica is closing out very nicely, hustling on all the loose ball. So they have to show that they can do that also. Good patience being shown by the Americans here. Nemerimbe. And those are the opportunities USA need to make use of. The GD was a long way out of play, was two and one in the circle. That needed to go, go in and score. It's so difficult when pressure is being put on you from first pass to last. And that's what's happening with the Americans. So even when they get to the edge of the shooting area, it's still difficult to get that final ball in. The options so limited as they look to go forward. Jamaica leading 33 to 8. 307 to go in the in the second quarter. Nemerimbe. <laughs> Good hustle there from Crystal. I, I'm really impressed with her so far in the wing defense position. She's hustling really hard and she's getting a lot of tips and touches out across the court. She sure is, sure. Just want to be at times, want to be a little clean, not to cause that contact, but she's really putting her body out there. Plummer into Pinkney. That's just too easy. <laughs> and that's how you punish a team. In the blink of an eye, Jamaicans were down the other end. And you, they, they, they turn over. No, Jamaica is two on the track. 
2.20 to go in the second quarter. The Jamaicans arrive at 35. They have scored 17 in the second quarter. That's one short of what they produced in the second. And they are threatening to outscore the combination of Janil Fowler and Kelsey Jonas from the first quarter. Pinkney and Allison stepping up with the youth and intensity. And oh, it lands for Pinkney. That was a brilliant pass. She's finding, she's finding some beautiful space on that baseline. I would say risky. It worked out, but it was a pretty risky pass. It really was a risky pass, but you know, she saw her teammate release it. That ball is already released. You can't do anything but try to catch it. And she did a brilliant job of doing that. Yeah, they have equaled what the combination of Fowler and Jonas produced in the first quarter. 18 goals and still a minute 20 to go in this second quarter. Shimon Shaw unable to hold on to it. There's a track and field athlete, a sprinter that attended St. Jago High School, super athlete at the high school level with that name, Kimon Shaw. Not the same one, just in case you're wondering. I don't think the track and field athlete was tall enough for this sport any, anyhow. She was fast enough, so maybe she could have played center. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My producer says she's a little shorter than Pickney. I don't know if a little shorter is the right, if, if little is the right word. <laughs> or a bit shorter. A lot shorter. <laughs> there is Crystal again. And straight in with a vision to Pickney. The Jamaicans are almost fighting over it. That's the 19th goal in the second quarter. And they're going to tear this place down. Again, Crystal Plummer is definitely going for the play of the match. That was another inter that was two intercepts in 10 seconds and two goal assists. Impressive work from the youngster. Not a lot of time left in this quarter. Another chance. Just misses Pinkney. But the combination of Giselle Addison and Amanda Pinkney scored 20. Two more than the combination of Janil Fowler and Kelsey Jonas. And at the half, the Sunshine Girls are tearing the Americans apart. They lead 39 to 8.
International Indoor Sports Center in Kingston, Jamaica. And uh, yeah, there you have it, USA 8. Uh, I think I was fooled by the main scoreboard earlier that had Jamaica at 39. They have now adjusted to 38. So just a little mix up there with the score, but it's 38 to 8. Um, the score at the halftime break in favor of the Jamaican scoring 20 in that second quarter. Let's have a look at those uh, highlights now uh, from the second quarter. The Americans scored just one goal in the second quarter, and that was from an Ireland guy. In Seven from nine for the match. Uh, there is uh, the teenager uh, putting that one away. Their lone goal in the second quarter. And the Jamaicans uh, uh, just uh, dominating. Well, this is still a look at first quarter action. Sorry. Um, this is when Janiel Fowler and Kelsey Jonas uh, were in the shooting circle for the Jamaicans. Fowler 13 from 15. Jonas 5 from 8. The two putting together 18 for the Jamaicans as they conceded 7 in that first first quarter and uh, Janil Fowler doing what you would expect Janil Fowler to do and then in the second quarter the Jamaicans making uh, changes in the shooting circle Giselle Allison coming on at goal attack and Amanda Pinkney coming on at goal shoot and they put together 20 goals in that second quarter Allison 6 from 7 Pinkney 14 from 16 and you have to say that the youngsters really put on uh, quite an exhibition in that second quarter definitely they were very very, very impressive. I think Coach Connie and um, Rob will be a little bit disappointed with the amount of turnovers, but they are youngsters and it's a learning experience for them and I, and I know they'll grow from this. Yeah, one thing for sure, they have the flair. Definitely a lot of flair and will, with Janil going off in that second quarter and Amanda and um, Giselle playing a more rotating circle. That's what they would be more used to because you don't have a lot of standing shooters on the local scene. So they'll be more used to the rotating circle. So that's why they look a little bit more comfortable and it allows them to play with a lot more flair and freedom. So um, the lobby looks easy when it's passed into Janil all the time, but it's actually a, a skill that you, you have to um, learn. Yeah, 12 turnovers for the Jamaicans, so still a pretty clean match for them. 19 contacts. I guess the Jamaicans are always going to be physical. Um, 14 uh, for the United States of America, 24 turnovers uh, for them. Half time, USA 8, Jamaica 38. The second half still to come. Barbados leading St. Lucia 25 to 12 in their match on court two. Back with more.
back at the National Indoor Sports Center. America's World Cup qualifying action, Jamaica versus the United States of America. We remind you that the matches involving Jamaica will not impact the overall standings. The Jamaicans have already qualified for the Netball World Cup by virtue of their ranking. And they are dominating this fixture. Welcome if you're just joining us on your home of champions, Ricardo Chambers, alongside former Jamaican player, coach, outstanding defender, Oberon Peterson Natty, and Kurt Dale, captain of Jamaica's male netball team. And if you didn't know that there's a male netball team in Jamaica, then now you know that they provide great practice for the female team whenever they're unable to travel overseas to get it and from what i've gathered they've had some tremendously close matches and we have just recently won the the, the first male competition in the americas region um we defeated st vincent in that final and it was re a really really good game those games are available on youtube guys if you want to watch <laughs> figured you would put a plug in <laughs> yes i did see a bit of the the matches in st vincent and it was i mean jamaica showed class they also had um invited teams from uh, south africa there was yes. a team from south africa that took part yeah so the jamaicans staying with pinkney and allison at goal shoot and goal attack and the united states looks as if they have brought on woods they have made some changes with the two sisters on the line, Trishana and Tishana, twin sisters. Um, they're on the defensive line for the U.S. and they have brought in a new center and wing attack. But they haven't scored just yet, so no luck so far. Yeah, and just one goal scored in that second quarter. And just, you know, Jamaica has to watch their movements on court. You know, just now we were caught, everybody on one side, everybody moving at the same time and not when their time to move. I mean, USA team is not a, a team of great caliber, I would say. So you'll get away with it, but with the tougher teams, you definitely won't. Sutherland into Giselle Allison. Allison under a little bit of pressure, but shrugs it off and scores Jamaica's 40th goal. The Jamaican defense suffocating the Americans. Definitely, definitely. Teresa and Crystal on that line, they are very reactive players and they have, their hands are everywhere. USA could try and implement some fakes. <laughs> They're just going straight at the moment yes. and the, 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 the Jamaican defenders are not having it. There you go. Good pass there by the center of the USA team to find the first goal. Ashina Graham on the back line. That's her first attempt. She finally got one on the box. I think it was her first attempt as well. For, for this quarter, she just had one in the when she came on as a sub in the second quarter. And at the other end, Giselle Allison continuing her great work tonight. The Americans closing in on double figures. Contact goal defense, penalty pass. Every pass is being pressured by the Jamaican defense. And Graham gets a second. Two Look, from two in this quarter. Looking a bit more comfortable, yes. um, Oshina, in that shooting circle. Yes. Um, wow. Amanda again with her signature role, and that was beautiful placement and beautiful take. I'm surprised that the American defense has not picked up on that move yet. Yeah, it, it's, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, and you need someone with real experience to identify it early and can implement things to, to combat it uh, and the role can only be effective when you have a lot of space to move so clearly the keeper is just giving her too many space you know so if you keep her on one side keep her on the ball keep her on the side away from the ball then it makes her difficult to do that kind of movement shy 
from shooting from distance, Giselle Allison. And that was a good patient build up to goal by the Jamaicans and Giselle in the shot. Yeah, just running rings around the Americans right now. That one is short, but the rebound with Pinkney. Surprised by the crowd inside the NISC tonight? No, not at all. Like, Jamaicans, we are sports fans and um, very patriotic. So, you know, we are going to be here cheering loud and proud for our Jamaicans. And it's also a national holiday, Heroes Day. Men and women from all walks of life honored at uh, the annual Heroes Day ceremony. Like that ball could have gone in a lot earlier. Oshina was on a really, really good hole. But the, because of the pressure and the doubt that the Jamaican defenders are putting on them, they were scared to put it in. Eventually went there and Oshina finished. Among the Jamaicans conferred with national honors today, Shelly and Fraser Price, Sharika Jackson, two world champions from the Eugene Athletics meet earlier this year. Pride of place tonight goes to the Sunshine Girls though. Beautiful work by the goal defense there. She got nice front space on the goal shooter and she took her feet to the ball and came up with it. Langain. She is just not scared to go for that ball. She single-handedly worked that ball down court. She's everywhere. And the Jamaican defenders, they were contesting every ball, but they were just strong on the ball just now, and they need to do more of that if they want to be competitive in this game. She's fearless. She's fearless. Yeah, it takes a high level of fitness to do what she is doing out there as well. She's fearless. There is Crystal Plummer again with the outside arm coming on the circuit edge to, to take that intercept. That's not easy to do, OB. No, there is Certainly it's not, especially on the circle edge. Seven and a half to go in the third quarter. Jamaica leading 44-12 over the United States of America. The highest aggregate in the tournament so far 74 goals by the Jamaicans in their opening game last night against St. Vincent and the Grenadines and they are on course to better that tonight if they can keep this going and not many would bet against them being able to do it 18 goals in the first quarter 20 in the second turnover but guess who is there to clean it up? The one and only Crystal Plummer, who has been having an excellent game. Allison produces the 46th goal of the contest for the Sunshine Girls. Another steal. By who? Plummer had it. <laughs> She's putting on a oh. master class in that goal wing defense position tonight. Plummer has been all over the place. Advantage break and goal. These girls do not lack style. <laughs> I have to say, I have to admit that they're very excited to watch, especially in the mid court. They are very excited to watch. Yeah, they play a highly entertaining brand of netball. Yeah. The crowd is call, calling for the role from Amanda, but this GK seems to be a little bit more experienced. If you watch her closely, she's doing what Obi and I were suggesting earlier. She's protecting one side, so Amanda is unable to get that role. She doesn't have that much space. No. And by the way, on the center, she's a Jamaican. She's a Jamaican? Yes. Oh, okay. Step forward. Yes. I think most of them on the USA team are. <laughs> yes. Defense advantage. You guys are so biased. Well, you know the USA team are mostly comprised of Caribbean players. There you go. <laughs> and so, and Jamaican, a lot of Jamaicans have played for the uh, the USA team. Yeah, and it's not just netball. N no. <laughs> And Amanda just added an intercept to her 
impressive stats so far this game. And now Alison will have a chance to complete the play. And she does so successfully. One away from 50, the Sunshine Girls. Join. There's Langine, what a match she's had for the Americans. She has really worked. She really tried. Didn't need the roll there, Pinkney, but she couldn't get it to land. I just got information that Shania the GK, she's not Jamaican, she's actually from St. Lucia. There oh, you go. She? Another Caribbean team. Yep. Addison sinks that one. And that's 50 for the Sunshine Girls. Ooh, where did that come from? Way off, you say. It's a bit of miscommunication. Ah, beautiful take from Crystal Plummer. I'm really enjoying watching her this night. They love to fire that ball into the shooting circle, don't they? That's what makes netball beautiful. The fast-paced, um, aggressive playing style. Whoa. High risk, high reward. The crowd shouting, take that ball away. And they have it. She got caught in a Jamaican sandwich and yes. she was she was put to the floor. I always thought those sandwiches were quite nice. <laughs> not for Shania and that and, and that um, in that case. Fifty to thirteen, the Jamaicans lead by thirty-seven. Two minutes and thirty seconds to go in the third quarter. Listen to the crowd. The one thing I can say is that the Jamaican crowd has learned over the years. There was a time when they would make all the noise when the Jamaicans have the ball and be quiet when the opponent has it. <laughs> Not anymore. Beautiful shot there by Amanda. But she's been quiet all uh, uh, for this quarter, not making much attempt. Yeah, Giselle has really stood up and there she is with yes. an intercept. I think we could just listen to the crowd for commentary. <laughs> Her shots are still on the OB, yes. but you can see the work of the goalkeeper on her. Yes. She's limiting the space that she has to work. Yes, and forcing the goal attack to take most of the shot. Few changes made by the Americans as the Jamaicans continue to litter the scoreboard. You will only see Jamaican smiles inside the stands. Beautiful hands from the wing attack. Red Hood there. Big shot from Amanda and it's close. I think she's one of the crowd favorite. I like her when she shoots a long shot. The roll and the long shot. You can do that when you are... 41 goals there, can't you? Of course, with no pressure. Happy to see her nailing those long shots because she's another one that will be going to the Fast Five in November. So we're hoping to see more of those. Yes. So catch your practice, Amanda. Fifty-five, thirteen seconds to go in this quarter. 
The Jamaicans have scored 17 in this quarter, the Americans 5, and the Jamaicans looking for their 18. They have a few seconds. She'll have to do it from distance, or will she? No. Went for the pass, and the horn will sound shortly. The Americans get the intercept, the horn sounds, and the crowd cheers. The Jamaicans deliver another fine quarter. They're least prolific though, they score 17 in that quarter, but the advantage is 42. The Sunshine Girls rolling over the Americans. Yeah, they can dance, why not? They lead 55-13 at the end of the third. One quarter to come, shake it out. The National Indoor Sports Center in Kingston, Jamaica is a buzz. The Jamaicans leading the United States of America 55 to 13, entering the fourth and final quarter. Another dominant display in the third quarter by the Jamaicans. 18 goals in the first, 20 in the second, and 17 in the third. The Jamaicans continued with a combination of Giselle Allison and Amanda Pinkney, Pinkney at goal attack and goal shoot. And for the United States of America, Anaya Gain continuing to be their leading light. Three goals from Graham, though. Finally got on the score on the scorecard. Score three from three in that third quarter. Quarter. She now has a three from four, but it's all about the Jamaicans. Giselle Allison, 16 from 22. Her percentage would have dropped in that third quarter. Pinkney, though, maintaining her high percentage, 21 from 23. Really impressive work from the Jamaicans in that quarter. It wasn't as high scoring as the two previous quarters, but um, I think the USA, they scored, a, they got more attempts at goal in that quarter and that denied the Jamaicans um, possession a little bit more, but I'm hoping to see the Jamaicans finish strong here. They have made some changes going into the last quarter, so let's see what they can do. Yeah, a look there at the statistics. I mean, anything that these stats tell you, Obi? Certainly that we need to, I mean, look at the contact, 24. I mean, USA is only 13, so there's no reason for 24 contacts. So we need to be a little bit more clean when we are contesting those balls. And uh, still take care of the ball. Still quite a lot of turnover. You know, almost half of um, USA's turnover. So still impressive. In the interception looks great. So just need to be a bit more clean in terms of defending. Don't want to give away a lot of unnecessary contact. For sure. Beautiful take by Giselle there. Oh, I love it to not finish with that shot. Yes. Sent a penalty pass. Fourth and final quarter. 
Barbados leading St. Lucia 41-17. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter over on court two. Woods on for the USA. She's on the pressure both from the defenders and the crowd. The crowd is quite happy to see her nail her first shot. I'm a little bit confused, can I tell you? <laughs> For a second there, I thought it was Jamaica who scored. Right. Oh! Is this the same crowd that was shouting defense, defense, when the USA had the ball earlier? Well, clearly there are a lot of Americans in here. Well, Jamaica has the ball now. Let's see what the crowd does. <laughs> Fifty-five, fourteen. The Jamaicans lead. Not the start of the quarter that they would have wanted. Almost two and a half minutes in and still no goals. Lot of family, lot of family members in the USA team. And we saw the wing defense, Trishana, pass to her sister in GK about three times. And then there's another pair of sisters on the bench, Oshina and Sasha Washington. Wow. Oh, wonderfully intercepted there by the goalkeeper of Team USA. That's what we call a specky. Yes. <laughs> you call that a specky? Yes, those type of intercept where the keeper come flying out of the circle. I wonder where that name came from. Giselle Allison scores Jamaica's first goal of the final quarter. Well, I tell you what has happened. There is a section of uh, the stands that has decided to cheer for the United States of America. Incredible. That's the only thing I can come up with. I think they've just been, you know, how Jamaicans are. Try to, you know, the last time we hosted the World Championship in 2003, I think um, we cheered for New Zealand. In the final? Yes. Yeah, because Australia beat us because, in the semi-final. Yes, and because we like cheering Whoa. for the underdogs. The, that was an incredible World Cup final, by the way. New Zealand beating Australia 49-47. I was probably like 10 years old, but I remember it like yesterday. I was a little bit older, but <laughs> who is counting? All right, we'll leave that one. We'll leave that one out. <laughs> Triple play by Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey Jonas back on, operating at the goal shoot position, replacing Amanda Pinkney. And Jonas played the first quarter alongside Janiel Fowler, scored five from eight, but she played in the goal attack position. I like what this goalkeeper for the USA is doing. That's the second time she came out hunting for, for intercepts. Yes. Jamaica needs to now be careful of those long pocket balls that they are passing. Addison gets the circle open for herself and puts away an easy shot. 74 the Jamaicans scored last night and they are up to 59 tonight with 10 minutes to go in the contest unlucky team USA yes Lucky team quite Jamaica. unlucky, quite unlucky USA in that possession. <laughs> yes, and I think that's an area that Jamaica can look to improve on their transition. They were a bit lateral in the, in the movement coming down. It is Jamaica 60 and the Sunshine Girls hit 60 for the second time in the tournament. Yeah. 
Nice front hold by Kelsey. Oh, unlucky to be called there. I thought that was really, really good by her. I think when the ball was in flight, she kind of held her off and then going forward, she called that contact. Smoking like a true defender, <laughs> Obi. <laughs> she was one of the best. <laughs> I agree. But she was the one doing the contacting. <laughs> But you wouldn't be able but, to tell. <laughs> yes. She was quite clever with it. Uh, and, and look what's happening now. You can sit on a player and it's okay. You can feel a player, it's okay. I tell you how much the game has changed. In your time, if you breathe on them, you would get called. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Six to 14, the Jamaicans lead the USA. Gabby Woods on a goal shoot alongside Anaya Langine. Flexible, fast, fit, young, and the future of American netball. And a fabulous shooting technique. Yeah. She's quite an athlete. She is, she is. Fearless too. And, and that's what I talk about, being clean on the attack. You, you have to be clean because on, on the other level, when you get to the tougher competition, you know, it could be more than just, it could be a warning. So, you know, if you have a chance to get the ball, you get that ball. If you don't, you, you know, get that body off. Definitely. She, I think what she did, she, she didn't run the line of the ball. She took the body instead. Gabby Woods falls short. <laughs> I think Gabby Woods, Gabby Woods is who the crowd really wants Crowd's to score. Favorite, yeah. yeah, I think I think it's Gabby. She has a lot of fans. Nearly <laughs> center pass, free pass. Well, they've had to wait a long time tonight to see her on court. Well, she actually was on that um, wing attack earlier. She was at the wing attack earlier. She came off and she's back in at the, at the goal shooter. Yeah. Beautiful contest there from Kwanya Walker. Another fire racket yes. in the team. Oh. The poor choice of pass right there. Be careful, okay? Watch the pushing. I think those moments are when they want to just take a breath and uh, ensure that they make a safe pass and get it to goal. The umpire quite clear. Watch the pushing. Yes. <laughs> Not a turnover. And the Jamaicans. Well, maybe it's Christmas. I know we start celebrating Christmas quite early these days. The crowd wants Gabby to get the ball. <laughs> and it's gone to Langine. <laughs> and there right. she was again in the middle of a Jamaican sandwich, but she came out on top this time around, scoring yes. another goal for Team USA. And it is just a mistiming part on the defenders. That ball went up, they jumped, and she just stayed a little second before she got up. I need to find out what the love affair is with Gabby Woods, though, because that very section that's sharing her was all over the place for the Jamaicans earlier. 63-16. Six minutes left in this contest. Jamaica with another dominant performance. Defensively, better than they were last night against St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but then again, St. Vincent and the Grenadines a significantly better team than the Americans. I love what the Jamaican defenders are doing. They're contesting every ball, which is what you want young players to be doing. But as Obi said earlier, just to clean up on the unnecessary contacts and they'll be fine. Better read this time from the defenders to get that one out of the air. Yeah. Much better timing. And she had good front position, which is what you want, the position you want to be in as a defender. Miserable night for the US attackers. Well, you know what? USA have a lot to be proud of. They really competed. I thought at one point that they wouldn't last for the game, but they have lasted and they are still trying to go at it. They are still trying. And 
they're still forcing the Jamaicans into errors. So, yes. um, I think they'll be really proud of this performance tonight. It's definitely an improvement on yesterday. Would have taken a lot of confidence from the victory over Antigua and Barbuda. And another turnover from the Jamaican sloppy in the closing stages. The crowd is saying, get the ball to Gabby Woods. See the Jamaican defenders, they're on it. They're, everybody's marking someone and they're contesting, which is making it really, really difficult for the USA team. And now they come away with the win. Allison puts that one in. 65th goal of the match for Jamaica. Doesn't look as if they will be able to match their 74 from last night. And this fourth quarter letting them down in that regard. Just nine goals scored. Now, Gabby Woods, if she scores, the crowd would go wild. They would erupt. I was hoping for it myself. <laughs> Now look at the transition from the Jamaicans. Well, Tafia eventually came through ball side, and that's what you want. You want to be on one side of the court coming down. You don't want to be swinging the ball across the court. That was a better passage from them. 6-6-16, six to six to 16, the difference is 50. The Jamaicans looking to finish with a flurry. Ah, shredding the needle by Kwanya, yes. Kwanya Walker. That was impressive. Risky pass, but it all it barely got there. I mean, risky is a, is a little bit of fun sometimes in that ball. You, you don't want to be too risky, yeah. but I mean, it does look good. It's fun, all right, when you're 51 goals clear. <laughs> Definitely. Yes, you can try anything. Talk to me when it's 50 50 and two minutes to play. That's when the hands get really heavy. And we've seen Anaya getting a bit tired, but she's still at it, still fighting. Terrific performance from her tonight. Courageous performance from her tonight. Her fighting spirit, her never say die attitude. Well done from Kelsey. She was called for stepping by the umpire, but she was straight onto defense and she intercepted that pass and scored. 68-16, the Jamaicans ahead. Nice interception there. The wing defense had a hand in it. Yeah, getting the deflection. The crowd saying, give Gabby the ball. Give Gabby the ball. Gabby won't get it there. Not when Teresa is around. Good backup from Kelsey, by the way. Oh, what? That was taken. amazing. That was amazing. How she what came around the body to snatch taken. that intercept. That was really, really good by Chishana. They have everything to be proud of. Definitely. Getting, Under a minute to go. Getting a little bit indisciplined there. I mean, she had such a good attempt at the intercept and then her team threw it away and it was coming straight back at her. A little bit of frustration. 16-69. Just over half a minute to play. The Americans with the ball. The crowd wants Gabby Woods to have at least one more shot. Not going to happen. The Jamaicans are heading towards 70. Here's the chance. The crowd erupts inside the National Indoor Sports Centre. And that's what they would love to see from that ball. The intercept by Kwanya and then the speed through the court was amazing just now. And the answer from the USA Centre.
The crowd wanted a goal, but not to be. <laughs> the final horn has sounded. And the Sunshine Girls have put on another show on Heroes Day in Kingston. Heroines of the night. Another quality performance. Janelle Paula was needed for only one quarter. But it didn't matter. The Sunshine Girls just too much firepower for their American counterparts. And they win convincingly. Back-to-back -back victories. No surprise for the black, green and gold. Tonight, it's 70 to 16 over the United States of America. Good team effort by Jamaica tonight. Um, it was really a full court effort from goal shooter straight down to GK. Everyone played their role really, really well. And I mean, there are things that they'll want to tidy up for the next game, especially coming up against the likes of Trinidad and Barbados. But um, a performance they can be proud of. Yeah, definitely a performance they can be proud of. Janelle Fowler started at goal shoot, played only one quarter tonight, started alongside Kelsey Jonas and the Jamaicans led 18-7 to at the end of the first quarter. Giselle Allison and Amanda Pinkney took up shooting duties in the second quarter. Allison at goal attack, Pinkney at goal shoot. They scored 20 goals in the second quarter and led 38-8. Then in the third quarter, the Jamaicans scored 17, uh, going up 55-11 to at the end of that uh, third quarter and uh, closing it out 70 to 16 uh, Jamaica scoring 15 in the final quarter uh, the Americans uh, scoring five and as you pointed out Kurt uh, uh, all court performance from the Sunshine Girls tonight defensively they were really good the Americans had little to no chance they just crowded them out the Jamaicans from the midcourt suffocated the American the Americans and uh, yeah Gabby Woods got Got a lot of love, but not a lot of goals for the USA tonight. Certainly not. Um, she had one for eight, so one from six. And I mean, goals is what we need. But I mean, the USA can be proud of themselves. I thought they did, a, you know, reasonably well, and um, they managed to score some, make some big plays. And of course, Jamaica was very good right throughout. However, I guess a lot, as Kurt mentioned, a lot needs to be taken in consideration in how they take care of the ball and their decision making. And of course, being a bit clean on the defensive end. Yeah, there are the final statistics. 47 turnovers for the USA, 27 for Jamaica, 29 contacts for the US, for Jamaica, 27 uh, for the USA. Uh, quite a number of them for the US coming in that final quarter. The statistic that matters most, you can see top middle in blue. At least I think that's blue. Jamaica 70, the USA 16 final score at the National Indoor Sports Center. Mariah Ramarak, I am sure, has enjoyed the netball tonight let's find out what she's up to what an electric match earlier and of course you could see you could see the vibe on the faces of the fan and of course you could hear the loud cheers a lot of Jamaican fans here and for them this would have they felt as if you know this was a top class win by their team but I'm standing now with the captain of USA Shayna Shayna uh, not the kind of performance that you would have wanted and of course the Jamaican fans didn't make it any easier for you <laughs> Um, well, we knew we were coming into at the beginning of the match when the Jamaica has, is number three in the world and they have what it takes to um, be on top and we did put our best foot forward, we worked hard, our shooters, again like the very first match is where we tried to get them to gel together better. Um, on the defensive end we do the best as a better t part of our team and I feel like we've improved a whole lot from yesterday morning until today and we'll be ready for tomorrow and the next game is going forward. And based on what you would have seen from your girls, you know, from match one now till today, would you say there has been any major improvements? Yes, we have had major improvements in the defensive area and also in the way that we bring the ball down to the circle. We're making less mistakes and we're feeding the circle a whole lot better. So we have we, we are improving based on um, more every day that we are here. No points uh, allocated today, which is always a good thing. Right. You you go back to, um, to the drawing board and you come stronger tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow we're going to come and 
put our stamp on it again. All right, thank you so much. And that was Shayna Wilson, captain of the USA team. I'm going to be joined now by no stranger, Janelle Fowler. She's the captain of the Jamaica Sunshine Girls. Janelle, a better performance than yesterday. Much better. I felt that the girls, they went out there, even though I played one quarter, but I felt the girls went out there today with more purpose um, and more action to their words in saying that they want to go out there and perform really well. So yeah, really pleased with their performance. Uh, any areas and it's sort of difficult after looking at how good the ladies were today any areas that you want to improve on now for the next game heaps of areas I reckon when we get balls we need to um, ensure that we score them you know and not become too frantic and throw them away because they're precious possession so making sure that when our defense win ball we um we score them and also making sure that we're converting the balls all our center passes Daniel thank you so much I know you're tired so you want to get back to your team Can Congratulations and best of luck in the entire tournament. All right, just here there from Janelle Fowler. It's now time to check in with the one and only Ricardo Chambers. Ricardo, it's back to you. All right, thank you very much, Mariah. Well, what a way to close the show tonight at the National Indoor Sports Center, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago. This is the day three schedule. What a match that's going to be to open our broadcast tomorrow. I'm already, I'm already excited about that one. The Cayman Islands will play Jamaica. USA versus Barbados will also have that match for you. And the St. Vincent and the Grenadines will take on St. Lucia. That is the day three schedule. Coverage starts at 6 p.m. Jamaica time. That's 7 in the rest of the Caribbean. And you can also watch the sports max zone which starts at 4 30 jamaica time 5 30 in the rest of the caribbean uh, to catch up with all the latest from this uh, tournament well it took, if last night was good tonight was even better day two of the america's netball world cup qualifying tournament victory for trinidad and tobago earlier grenada winning as well jamaica most dominant a dismissive performance over the united states of america yeah they were entertaining and and the fans absolutely loved it. Heroes Day in the land of wood and water. And the netballers are heroines of the night. Take care. We'll be back on day three.